Welcome back to another rebuild here. I'm out of 24, and today it's of the Houston Texans, a team that would have been expected to be in a rebuild state even after going for C.J. Stroud. However, they exceeded everyone's expectations, making the playoffs and even winning a game. I think there's no team that would have uh, agreed with that more than the Cardinals, who obviously essentially gave the Texans Will Anderson for a draft pick that is nowhere near as good as they thought it was going to be. But looking at this offense, talking about some of the biggest names, obviously C.J. Stroud is the biggest of them, uh, Rookie of the Year. And was he already Superstar? Did he get Superstar off that Rookie of the Year? Either way, he's Superstar, and that's all that matters. Uh, obviously, some of the other names, uh, Joe Mixon now added a squad, traded for, a, I think, a seventh-round pick. At first, it was like a release, and then, you know, because nothing was official till well, technically yesterday, uh, before then, they could say, no, well, hold on, hold on, if you really want him and you don't want to bid for him, you're cool with the contract. Okay, seventh round pick, why not, why not, let's just, let's just do this, happens, uh, and then receivers, uh, this is a team that had Nico Collins just break out like nobody's business, of course, in our Texans franchise, it kind of happened there, not as well, but he obviously had some pretty damn good seasons uh, for us there as well. But Nico Collins just wasn't, you know, the best receiver on this team. He was one of the best receivers in the entire league. And uh, we'll see if he can actually build on that here in this rebuild. Uh, you know, normally he's like a normal dev 79 overall, which is still developable. But now at 83 overall, star. Now we're talking. Now we're talking about a guy that could get to Superstar, could get to x Factor, could get a 90-plus overall. Tank Dell, a lot of potential there. Uh, 5'10". I always thought he was 5'8". Am I crazy? Uh, but I don't think we need a wide receiver. In January, I did a, a Texans rebuild where I uh, did take a wide receiver in the first, but I think I'm going to be going either cornerback or O-line, which, speaking of O-line, Shaq Mason is not the right tackle. He's just uh, best available, you know, depth chart move. He will be moving to guard, so we probably will go with the tackle. I mean, it's not a bad line, but definitely, uh, definitely could be better. Tunsil. That trade, that lucrative, crazy trade with the Dolphins involving multiple first-round picks, I believe, uh, still here. So, I mean, it is what it is. Dalton Schultz got a nice three-year 36, I believe. Uh, you know, not a bad player, obviously. Could do better, but you could also do a lot worse. And we are seeing tight ends get paid similarly to these offensive linemen like we were just talking about. But offensively, in a Madden rebuild sense, you know, maybe three, four linemen, perhaps, but the skill positions, I think, are kind of fine. I do worry a little bit about Mixon. Also, I should mention Pierce. I wouldn't say a weird situation, but kind of strange because, you know, Damian Pierce with a questionable quarterback situation kills it in his rookie year. Second year, had C.J. Stroud, a threat of a passing attack, and just nothing. I mean, it was just a really bad year for him. Now, I think I did read somewhere, though, that uh, he was in the top five, maybe even top three, for going against stacked boxes. Uh, so maybe it's the coaching a little bit, you know, kind of thinking, okay, well, you know, the pass attack is great. You know, just run the ball, whatever, you know. It, it, we don't have to be creative, you know. Teams are going to have to respect the pass. Maybe they got lazy. I don't know. I, I, NFL and lazy coaching, I don't think that really goes together. But uh, something's got to give. And running against a stacked box so much, it's going to kill your yards per carry. But is it going to bring it down to 2.9? I don't think so. I think there, there's something going on there, but they brought in Joe Mixon, so maybe they do think that, you know, Pierce isn't the guy. But uh, looking at defense, cornerbacks, actually not bad. In Madden rebuild sense, I will have to replace King, will have to replace Okuda. But in real life, they could easily roll Stingley, King, and Okuda. Uh, which, speaking of Stingley, which kind of goes with maybe, I don't know how many Texans fans are doing it, but talking crap about Bryce Young. You got to give it a little bit of time because obviously, you know, the Sauce Garner Stingley situation. I mean, let's be honest, there was probably a lot of people calling Stingley a bust. And then year two, boom, killed it. Superstar, 87 overall. Uh, Will Anderson, obviously, pretty damn good. Daniil Hunter, they lost, they lost Grenard, who was really good, actually. Probably the most underrated player of 2023. Um, but they end up replacing with Daniil Hunter, which. That is definitely an improvement, not to, you know, talk bad about Grenard, but uh, as far as age goes, not by much. So, uh, you know, you lose two years, you get the better player, I guess, for right now, which, I mean, the Texans, even though they're supposed to be in rebuild mode, are kind of in a win now, almost. Like, they're they're actually a, a super sleeper team, but as far as real life goes, safety definitely is an improvement needed. Linebacker, they got Al Shahira. 
uh, 3 of 34, I believe. He's serviceable. Christian Harris had a couple of really good games last year. We'll see what kind of step he takes. But as far as a Madden rebuild goes, uh, and they did bring Autry, which I don't know what to do with him. I put him at DT because he's 285. I've seen things where it says he's 270 and, you know, more of an edge rusher. I don't know what to do, but at 285, I'm putting him at DT. This team needs DT more than edge. If I get some DTs, I'll put him back at edge as a backup. But this team's pretty good. They got depth. They got good starters. This is, you know, the kind of the sleeper team for 2024, although it's CJ Stroud now. It's kind of hard to fall under the radar. But, yeah, like I was saying, need a linebacker, maybe two. Need a strong safety. Definitely need corner. Definitely need DTs. Definitely need O-line. But that's pretty much it. As far as real life goes, could use some O-line, I suppose. Uh, maybe a safety uh, and then a linebacker and a DT. But, yeah, more to rebuild in-game than, uh, you know, outside of it. So that's why we're going to be doing this team here uh, today. And if you guys have been enjoying the rebuilds, which we've been throwing a lot at you, uh, you know, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, uh, as we do a ton of franchise stuff, rebuilds included, obviously. And uh, you should have seen a Bison's franchise uh, video earlier today. Going to chill with the rebuilds tomorrow, and we'll have another Bison's franchise tomorrow. And then Saturday, probably Bison's with Bears franchise, and then a rebuild on Sunday. But let me know what teams you want to see next, because I know I did say, you know, I did have that vote. And it was the Giants was number one, I think the Raiders, then the Bears, and then I don't even remember. But, uh, you know, the Giants probably will be coming up soon. I just kind of wanted to gauge some interest. I also kind of want to do a Titans rebuild. They actually added a lot of players as well, and... There's a, there's a couple of teams out there, but uh, yeah, Texans for now. Let's let's see what we can do. All right, in the draft, pick 23. I actually should adjust things because I want the first three picks at minimum to be QB. And I also just skip, so I have no idea if they actually did take the, uh, the quarterbacks or not. But we're at pick 23. There should be some players. Oh, come on. Why is there so many good wide receivers here? Wiggins, I just made that play for the Packers, actually. Some edge here. Okay, so there are names that just shouldn't be here right now. And with that being said, there are a lot of options. Uh, I feel like they definitely would go safety if there was one there. The problem is, I don't like 23. And I know there's going to be some people that are, like, are mad at me being a little too crazy about how many times I like go for age mainly. But it's a fair argument. Alright, relax. Okay, this isn't real life. This is the Madden. But I actually don't know what to do here because I kind of want to go best available, but I also want to, like, fill the needs that we have, like DT still. Uh, alignment definitely wouldn't hurt, but I would also be really saddened if we took alignment that was normal dev because I don't like the user classes for linemen. This is a Bengals class, but uh, most classes just don't have hidden linemen if they're user. Worthy would be interesting. Would you go with the speed pick for fun? Xavier Worthy? We really don't need wide receiver, though. I'm just going to roll Tank Dell, I think. The biggest need going forward is definitely in the secondary. I don't think Nate Wiggins hits 23, though, does he? I just did this with the Packers, though. I like, I try my best to not double pick. I know, you know, you look at mock drafts all the time. It's like it happens, like, they'll do, someone will do a mock draft today. It'll be Wiggins to the Packers, and then four days later, it'll be Wiggins to... The Ravens or something, but I don't know. I'm really struggling with this pick because a part of me wants to just go Brian Thomas, but the Texans actually do line up Tank Dell out wide a lot, and he seems to kill it there, so I don't really think they need that position. And then for DT, I don't really like the value, I guess, Fisk, but that's a little bit of a, a reach. I don't know, man. He's 23 as well. Do I take Graham Barton and just play him at guard? Because that's where he was listed before anyways, isn't it? First round lineman to to solidify that offense a little bit more. I think the cornerback value is crazy, though. I'm going Nate Wiggins. Screw it. I know I just did that with the Packers, but I don't care. Nate Wiggins, the value. Next pick is in the second round. Maybe I could have traded down a little bit, actually. But uh, next pick, I don't think we could really trade up. And there's just some teams that are in a spot where you really shouldn't be trading up. And I think this is one of them. Not that it's a bad spot to be in, but just, I don't know. I just think it's smart not to trade up. Uh, safety, definitely a need. It might even be what I take here. Linebacker's for sure a problem, but I don't know if I like the value. Ooh, we could go DT. It's just pretty good projection as well for him. I think I'm going to go with him. I'm pretty sure he should be a uh, star dev still on this class. Oh, no, he's normal. Oh, no. What class did I use? Maybe it wasn't Bengals class last time I used for this. 
Well, we got a DT. The team needed it. I mean, he'll start somewhere. I guess maybe uh, we do put Autry at edge. Backup edge, perhaps. What do we have in the third round? Tez Walker. That would be an interesting move. I think i just seen him there. Phillips. Don't really need corner anymore. Safety for sure. Vaki. That would be an interesting move. Trevin Wallace. Like I said, I don't know if he actually could play both, but he is built to play both. Looking at his ratings, uh, Trevin Wallace. Yeah, I think I'm going to put uh, Trevin Wallace uh, on the squad. Put him in coverage. I, I think that's I think that's fair. Uh, we're going to the fourth round now. Didn't really uh, improve the O-line too much, though, which worry, you know, it's worrisome. Definitely would like a safety if there's an option here. James Williams, if he's here, would be great. Seems like the only safety is Simpson, and I don't really know a whole lot about what's going on there. Could go with another D lineman too. Wide receiver, anyone there? McMillan's interesting. Rice. Any of these corners able to play safety, actually? We're going to go pure athleticism. Uh, Jalen Simpson, a little raw, but great hit power with some athleticism. So, welcome to the squad. Normal dev, 92 speed, 92 excel. Then our next pick, after pick 27 in the fourth round, is all the way in the fifth. Which definitely makes me hesitate a little bit. I would like a linebacker again. DT would be nice. O-line, I just know that the O-line are all going to be like normal dev. And it kind of defeats the purpose. You can't really develop these guys like realistically. Uh, Lu Fao. I don't know if that's how you even say his name, but Lu Fao. Not the most athletic looking at that left side, but A zone coverage, why not? 85 speed, 84 excel. Did I just get a Henry Toa Toa? <laughs> Did I just get another, uh, another Henry? I might have just made a really bad decision. Don't think that linebacker is that big of a need in real life, but, you know, once again, we are in a Madden rebuild, and I think it is one of our biggest problems. O-line, like I said, is as well, but unfortunately, you know, these guys are all going to be pretty much normal. Uh, Trey Harris, I don't know if this guy is, like, even this class, but I'm taking him. He's a backup level wide receiver anyways for us, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. And then 27... Could use another running back. Oh, my God. They have 32 as well. A lot of seventh-round picks. These are nice picks to have in real life. In game, I don't know how much it's going to matter, but uh, McLaughlin, am I, I might be, like, taking a player that's not supposed to be here. I, I'm going to take him anyways, though. Once again, another backup regardless. Just taking players that uh, could be good backups for us. Good depth. You know, someone needs a contract. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember when we took him. We can just play him instead. Uh, and there are some good wide receivers, but some of those guys I know for a fact should not be there. Running back... Uh, do any of these names look familiar? I think Steele goes to free agency a lot. I don't even know. I'm just going to grab another guy that's never going to play significant snaps, but at least we got someone on the roster for four years, you know? Let's take a look at what we landed. Obviously, we already know about the cornerback, but um, some of the other guys are not super known to me. 73 or 72, 72, 69, 69, 70, 67, 71. I'm trying to think, did I make a mistake anywhere? We didn't get a lineman, which is a problem, but like I said... This is where the Madden aspect comes into it. 95% of the linemen uh, in the draft, even when you consider the first rounders, are normal dev. And you're just not going to be able to develop those guys. So, unfortunately, we couldn't really do anything for the O-line. But I think Houston, there's no chance they don't go O-line. So, before someone cries in the comment section saying, You didn't even have one lineman? So unrealistic. Unliking. Unsubbing. It's Madden. Relax. It is still a video game, once again. I think we did all right, all things considered. Punch the mic. Yeah, take that, punk. All right, season one team. Uh, we definitely, like I said, I wanted to do more for the O-line, but unfortunately, we were using a user class. If I didn't go for Barton in the first round, which maybe in the end it's going to be a decision I regret, I don't think it will be. Uh, there's not going to be a lineman that is going to improve us long term, so it's, it kind of sucks, but that's just the way it goes, using the user class, which you should, because, you know, they're more fun and more realistic, because obviously you're going to have players that are from the real-life class, obviously. Uh, put a lot into defense. The defense wasn't bad for uh, for Houston last year. Definitely could have done a little bit better in coverage, but uh, it wasn't bad, and they did get Daniil Hunter in uh, free agency, but I still felt like a lot of the picks needed to go to that side of the ball. Wiggins, Wallace, uh, the DT... All guys are going to be huge for us down the line. Hopefully, at least two out of three. Uh, maybe even three out of three. Because like I said, there's a lot of chances with these guys getting dev ups. 
And uh, that's the hope, at least. Did we even grab a single offensive player? We got, you know, uh, Trey Harris. You know, nothing crazy, though, right? Definitely going to load up on O-line, though, in the uh, the next offseason. So just uh, hold in there, boys. Just hold in there, and, and we'll get you some help. We'll get you some O-line help next season. It's going to be crazy. First, second, third round. Maybe not the first round, but at least the second and third, maybe in the fourth. Not really the best of seasons. Nico Collins, if he's playing anything like what he's playing right now, he definitely needs more money than that. And he looks like he's kind of on par to easily exceed it. So how much is this? This is 13 per. Normally, I would like, you know, not do way more than uh, what I'm supposed to. But a five-year 90 even for the way he's playing is so low. And that's still an overpay. Uh, Joe Mixon, I really need a dev up from you, buddy. But a two-year 24, 12 mil per for some of the best running backs in the league is kind of on par, although he's 28, 29. So he's definitely getting paid more than he probably should here, but I'm cool with it. Uh, Ward, obviously need a replacement. Simpson could be that replacement. Stingley, uh, even though the fifth year option might save us money in the end, I'm probably just gonna, you know, not do it and then do a seven year next season. And there's the dev up we were looking for. Star dev 20 KXP. That's a win. All right, not the best of seasons. End up going seven and ten, which definitely could happen. You know, the AFC side is strong, uh, and the division is. I mean, it's gearing up. The Titans are not gonna be a pushover. The Jaguars are, uh, you know, they have some talent on offense. And then the Colts, if Anthony Richardson's healthy, uh, you know, they could go anywhere as well. So, I mean, it's not a team, you know, division and definitely conference that is easy to win in. So, 7-10 and 10 very well could happen. I mean, this is, wouldn't even be considered like, oh, sold an opportunity. Sure, maybe, but, you know, it's just competition's competition. Joe Mixon was great. Please tell me the yards are good enough to superstar, get to superstar. Nico, definitely considered a better season. We consider similar yards, better touchdowns. Uh, I don't know where Tank Dell is uh, on the list there. Um, just the scheme, probably. Defensively, Will Anderson with 15 sacks. Nine for Hunter. Three and a half for Oro, 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 Oro. <laughs> Wallace, three sacks, but obviously he's supposed to be uh, in coverage mainly anyways. Kicking, not bad. Punting, okay. Let's take a look at MVP. Who goes Lamar? Did we even get on the list? I'm a little surprised. I mean, it wasn't the best season, but it was good. Nico at five, which is the only non-quarterback or running back on that top five list, which is pretty impressive. Uh, defensively, no rookie of the year, no defensive rookie of the year, no best QB all the way at nine. A little you know, surprised by that. Seven for Mixon. Best wide receiver goes to Nico. Should be a superstar. Could be an X factor, which would be insane. O line at number five, D line at number two and eight. Best linebacker, not on the list. Best DB at number nine. And then best kicker at number seven. What about uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year? Where was our guy? Yeah, I mean, if Trevin's at number four, I guess they don't just give it to whoever is the... Because Trevin had a lot of tackles, right? Yeah, 104 tackles, three sacks, five tackles for loss. I mean, normally it feels like you just get it if you're the user. But being number four with that many tackles, I maybe they don't. Maybe we have earned it more often than I feel like we have. As the Packers go up against the Ravens in the Super Bowl, I mean, I could see it. Definitely some new teams as well, with the winner being the Packers. Derrick Henry, so close, yet so not far away. It's really not. That that whole saying of so close, yet so far away, it's kind of a dumb saying. It's not, I get it, because you didn't win it. It's like, you know, if you lose the Super Bowl... You basically kind of did the same thing as being 0-17. Like, in a way, if, you know, the only goal is the Super Bowl, you did the same as that team. But at the same time, nah, dude. It didn't work like that. Superstar dev for Nico. Really wish it would have been an X Factor because you could have got Superstar from the uh, the wide receiver of the year and then gets the X Factor based on, like, stats. But that unfortunately does not happen. Will Anderson is an X factor. Wallace is a star. Those are kind of the positions. Oh, and Ward retired. Those are kind of the positions I expected and really wanted to get dev up. So at the end of the day, uh, those those first three draft picks seemingly pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. All right, resignings. I think we took care of all the guys we needed to. Fifth year option for Stingley. Uh, I don't really know. It, it like it doesn't really save you any, right? Because at best it'll save you like five mil. But when you factor in, if you just resign them right away, it's probably going to save you like two mil per year or something like that. And two mil per year times six is a lot more than five. So I don't think it's worth it. Desmond King. 
He's been here for a little while now. I'm gonna go for another re-signing on him. I want that. I want that depth. Number three. Uh, I think we can do better than Kenyon, but for right now, uh, you know, he's on the team. Not gonna go for the fifth-year option though. I don't think. Batu Kasi. I mean, I think we need to go someone like DT. Ah, oh, he's much more of an overall than he is a great player. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah. I mean, just gonna replace linemen through the draft, and. Uh, Get a DT. Maybe DT in the first, second, third, or lineman. Maybe trade up into the third to get another lineman, and we're in a decent spot. We still probably need one more lineman, but for now it's fine. Shaq Mason should still be around, so we'll be fine with that. Maybe free agency helps us out, though. You never know. Let's see if there's anyone here. Nick Chubb, been seeing his name a lot. Javon Holland is a name and a half. Waddle, don't see him going to free agency. Maybe Newsom, don't really see him going to free agency either. Joke, way too expensive. Demarcus Lawrence, don't need him. Ryan Jensen, I think he even retired like this year in real life. Nick Bolton, that would be a name and a half. I am surprised to see him here. Chiefs, uh, I mean, it feels like the Chiefs still have more money than they probably should, but I, f I imagine they find a way to keep him. Justin Reed, I think definitely would be a cap casualty at some point for them. Ernest Jones is a decent fit. I don't think the linebacker's a pro. Well, actually, we do need a middle linebacker. You know what? I might actually spend money on Nick Bolton here. I know they just paid Al Shire in real life, but, like, Madden Al Shire is just not great. There's not a whole lot going on there. This is expensive, but I think it's worthy, especially since we're about to replace, like, the majority of our own line with rookies anyways. Safety's up there, but I think we can just draft someone. We could probably draft linebacker and develop it better anyways, but I just like Nick Bolton a lot, so if we can get him, I am going to go for him. DT, like I said, I think we should just draft one. But Eric Armstead, if he wasn't being offered, I think would have been a guy that I definitely would have taken a shot at. And I think that's it. I don't think there's anyone else around that we should be going for. All right, Nick Bolton, let's see it. Nice, five-year 80, which is a lot of money. But for what he's going to bring to us, it is actually a win for us. And I genuinely forgot that we were a bad team. I was expecting something in the 20s, and here we are at pick 10. I don't think it changes too much, but this actually might add to our value, because I was thinking pick 20-ish, we trade down to 12, grab the 2-3 uh, to three safety that I have, Ben Smith, grab some linemen, but now I might be able to trade to 20, grab a DT, trade up to 12, ish because that's you know usually safeties when it's a two to three they can go anywhere from like eight to 20 so i usually go around 10 to 12 so if we can get that you know that's usually what i'll do but uh we might actually be able to get a dt in the first round as well which is probably the smart bet uh second round next year this is gonna do nothing for me is it i'm gonna have to trade manually again that that trade's actually not bad but I would really prefer to get a second this year if I can. All right, we trade Titus Howard a first this, a fifth this, and a sixth next year to move uh, down to 21 and grab their respective second and third round picks that go with it. So pretty fair stuff. I had to try to figure out who the hell need to be moving around. And, of course, Trey White still being there is a definite thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, Sheldon Teague. Was that actually the tackle I was looking to go for? There was actually a tackle I seen up there. I was like... Oh, no, I see some A's in there. I don't know if it was him or not, but uh, anyone else? Percy Rainey, a tight end. We definitely could use a tight end for the future as Dolan Schultz isn't going to last forever, and once his contract is up, we're probably going to have to move on. Oh, UDFA quarterback. All right, so as far as the DT game goes, I actually think Reynolds might be the best of the bunch, but he's a 2-3, to three, so unless I trade down again, which I could, I can get some more value. I don't know. Uh, I also really like Carroll, but I think I should go Smith. I think it'd be smart to trade down, but I think Barksdale looks great too. 21 years old, 41 reps. If he's normal, I'm going to regret it, but I'm going to go for Barksdale. Ah, it's just so annoying because, like, Reynolds might be a goon DT, and he might be hidden, and I just took a guy that, like, you know, I, I could have just I could have went for Reynolds. It can't go worse, you know? And Reynolds is still there, of course. Safety. Uh, Smith should be there. He is. Ben Smith. Uh, 22, 6'2". Also normal, Tev. Oh, my God. Yikes. Let's go to 21. Probably trade down to, like, the early third. Use uh, as much capital as we can to uh, move up again to grab a few linemen. 
at least the linemen be uh, hidden, please. Because O-line or D-line and safety, we can get dev ups there. But O-line, you're not going to get dev ups. It is very unrealistic to try and get dev ups with those guys. Um, which Bishop looks pretty good. We're definitely going to go for Parks. Probably going to go Hood. Probably going to go Yates. The run block, I don't really too worry about it too much. I also would like to go for a tight end, I think. Well, let's uh, let's do what we said we were going to do. Move to like 7 or 8. I don't know what the desperation is going on here, but I'm going to take this trade with the Falcons. Not even moving to the third round, and we're getting a, a fourth round pick out of them. So where we kind of lost a little bit on that trade down with the Bills, we actually... Uh, you know, went positive in that trade with the, uh, well, whoever the hell we just traded with. I already forgot. Let's go to the Panthers now, and now it's time to start taking some players. can't believe I took a first round. Why are these, is the corner still there? Like, these corners, I mean, Wilburn might be worth it to try and play safety. A zone coverage really fast. I'm going to regret doing that. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm just going to develop the guys we have, and if we need a new safety in the future, I'll go for one. But Parks obviously looks like the best lineman available. Mantra Parks. Thank you. That's a good start. And then I don't know if they're all going to be there, but we have a couple of options. We only really need three linemen for this year, so I'm kind of chilling. There should at least be two more linemen left. Uh, what else do we have? Bishop was a thought. Hood was a thought. I think uh, Jack Yates is the best remaining. Got that F run block, which is scary, but... A power block. I mean, that the pass block, it looks pretty prototypical to me. And it's hidden. It's another hidden. Like I said, if there was going to be any position where we got unlucky, just don't let it be the O-line. And you know what? I wouldn't trade this for the world. And I was going to trade up, but we actually have some options. We might actually be able to fill all of the linemen if we're lucky. Also, we got to pay attention to tight end. I don't remember who was who, but one of those names did look familiar. Beecham was one of my linebackers. Peterson was one of my linebackers. Norwell was one of my tight ends. Damn, they are taking my players left and right. Do we have a tight end still? I mean, that wouldn't be the worst thing. We got two tight ends. Okay. I've seen a bunch of linemen go. Might have even been some of the guys we had on our list. See, we got O-line. Sharp is still there. I don't really like him. Colbert actually looks pretty good. I kind of just, like, glanced over him. Yeah, Colbert looks pretty good. Jeff Colbert. And another hidden! We are... I, I'm Like I said, I'm happy with it. I am... A-okay with that. Those two normals I could probably develop, even if we can't, so be it. The O-line was the biggest problem by far, and we cooked. We got three hiddens. Might even try our luck with another one in the fourth round. We had a day three there, and the tight ends are still there. There's one, so let's go to the, the Ravens, get a tight end, and then if I can, I could try to stay at the fourth round, maybe get the lineman at pick 10 and have ourselves a really good you know, round three and four. We trade a late fourth this, a fourth next, and two sevens this to move up to uh, the late third, which I think is going to be the tight end of pace. I think he is uh, six foot six. Just enough speed to be like, yeah, he's a mismatch. Uh, but six foot six, 273, especially with that weight. Uh, oh, he was way faster than I thought. I thought he was a four. Oh, yeah, four, five, six. Four, five, six is still really good, but that's what I thought at the time. Uh, Taj pace. And he's hidden. This has been honestly, even if the overalls are low and they're all star dead, one of the best third rounds I've ever had in Madden Rebuild history. And that's saying something, but it really is. This has been a third round for the ages. And then on top of it, Bishop, the center is there, could literally fill our whole line. And we do. We do. I can't remember how many of those guards we took were, like, you know, tall enough to play tackle, but we literally fixed our entire O-line. In one draft. Like I said, D-line, you know, DT, you might need a new one. Safety, you might need a new one. But they are developable. And we even got ourselves a future freaking tight end. If we can get a backup running back here, this would be insane too. I mean, who knows? Could you imagine, Holiday? Ah, you can't, you can't win them all. But obviously, a 7th round running back is a 7th round running back. Uh, let's, let's see what overalls we got. I would imagine... You know, the free safety, I'm going to say like 73, 74. D-line, hopefully 75. O-line, I mean, that could be literally anything. Probably 73s. Uh, 74, 74, kind of what I said. 73, 75, 72, 72, 72, 70. Not bad at all. I mean, I'm still kind of curious to see what these ratings look like. 21 years old, though, so he has more time to develop. Yeah, 80 block shed's great. 93 strength. I have to look at Reynolds, though, because obviously... 
<sighs> Could have been a massive sell. Really good zone. Good hit power. Not bad. Uh, and then O-line. Somebody's got to change because they're all left guards. Uh, Yates maybe makes the most sense at center. I don't know if any of the other guys were smaller, but he'll be our new center, I suppose. Let's see if any of these guys are superstar. Star dev for Yates. We really did cook, though, when it comes to um, O-line. Mantra Parks, he's pretty big, so I don't know if I see him being a tackle, but we'll see. Uh, Colbert, maybe this will be our tackle. 6'2", oh, he fits as a center even more. Oh, no. Uh, I guess, no, I'll just keep this guy left guard. I mean, since I'm already looking, might as well take a look at the dev star. Yeah, we're going to move our center to right tackle, I guess. He's the, oh, no. Center to guard. Ta guard to tackle, I guess. I don't know. I'm all over the place here. But I do want to see that tight end. See how good he actually was. How fast was he, actually? He wasn't really that fast for 4-4-9, was he? He was like 86 speed. Yeah, 86 speed, 88 excel. It's not bad by any means, but... Could be the future tight end here. Uh, a little raw, but you kind of expect it. has all the catching traits. Really can't ask for much more than that. A little bit of speed, a little bit of catching traits, a little bit of size... And Star Dev. If you imagine, he was like a superstar on X-Factor. So, probably all stars, but uh, it is what it is. We uh, we still cooked in that third round. All right, here's the team. We got a bunch of linemen. Uh, I completely forgot we had Shaq Mason, but we have the future lined up anyways. So, uh, we're chilling. Uh, this is what the squad looks like. And, uh, yeah, outside of maybe running back, because Mixon you know, didn't get that superstar Dev, and he's like 29 now. We're in a pretty good spot. And then defensively... Uh, we'll see what Barksdale looks like, and we'll see what the Smith looks like, but uh, it might just be Daniil Hunter going forward that we need to replace if those two names we just mentioned actually do well. And our cap situation, I would imagine, for right now is is in a pretty good spot too, so really just need to win some games, which might result in a scheme change, at least something that's a little bit more wide receiver stat friendly, so we can actually start developing some of these receivers. So, I mean... I kind of want to go back to Cincinnati. The last rebuild we did wasn't OP. was actually pretty fair right on the borderline of, uh, you know, good, I suppose. So we're going to go with Cincinnati and then multiple zone. Pretty good start to the season and just choke city. Uh, still have a chance at the playoffs, but it is dwindling. Seven-year, 137 for Derek Singley. He is here basically for the rest of his career. Petrie. See him reach free agency every once in a while, but a four-year 36 is going to prevent him from doing so. Pierce, you know what? I just punched the mic again, okay? I scratched my head because I was thinking. Uh, we're going to do a two-year, like, 13. He's obviously not a starter right now, and uh, I think that's fair money. Uh, Christian Harris, six-year, 54. We're not a 44 mil, though, which is worrisome as, uh, you know, Strahd's not up for contract just yet, but it's getting there. Uh, maybe even a fifth-year option in for him. Will Anderson might even be uh, on the fifth-year option list, so... I mean, we're calling, you know, we're, we're kind of cutting it close a little bit. Choke City. And we still make the playoffs, though. Uh, wait, if we made the playoffs, that means the Jags made the playoffs, too. The Colts, the whole damn division pretty much was 9-8. and eight. We barely made the playoffs, if you want to even call it f deserved. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we had a really good start to this season. 4-0 start. Loss, win. It's like, okay, we got back on track. And then just look at all these L's. Did just enough, and I mean, like barely just enough to make those uh, make that uh, postseason. Let's take a look at the numbers with the Bengals scheme. Uh, pretty much the same, you know, passing numbers. Uh, kind of the same, a little bit worse rushing numbers. I mean, even with this change of scheme, and I mean, it kind of was a downgrade, really. So I don't know what's going on, but uh, defensively. Daniel Hunter with 11 sacks, 9 for Barksdale, which is really good. 9 for Will Anderson, which is a drop-off. Or with 6 interceptions, we had a couple guys with 3 apiece. Fairbairn missing 2 kicks again, I believe. Townsend, 52 yards per punt. And maybe a Barksdale win for Defensive Rookie of the Year, but outside of that, I do not think we're going to win a single thing. And we do win Rookie of the Year, which is great. Maybe even good enough to get to Superstar. But yeah, like I, like I said, not good enough for anything else. But we do have a game here. That's better than I was even expecting when I started seeing those L's pile up. But 88 overall Ravens versus our 87 overall Houston Texans. Going to the end of the game. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop the run. This is, once again, a team that is apparently really good against the run. Uh, so far, so good. 21-0 at half. Not really. 21-7. 
They gave themselves a little bit of room, but it is now a 21-point game again. 14-point game. They're getting the stops, and they're getting the scores. We're choking the lead, but the defense does just enough. 28-21 to 21 over the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, CJ Stroud has a really good game. Uh, well, actually, I can't even say really good game. Touchdown to pick ratio is great. Completion percent is great. But not a whole lot of yards. Rushing wasn't even that great. Derrick Henry was limited hard. Mark Andrews with two uh, touchdowns. Trey Harris with a touchdown and 82 yards. Cooper with a sack. Away with a sack. Uh, one with uh, for Daniil Hunter. No picks. No kicks. Well, at least regular field goals. But a win. Divisional round. What are we looking at? The Chiefs. 15-2. and two. Oh, my. We are the same overall, though, so you never know. And the next round is going to be the Jaguars. Whoever plays uh, wins this one gets to play the Jaguars. If we win, it's a divisional battle. Chiefs kind of limited, but we are super limited, and that could be GG. 17-0 at half. We finally get a touchdown on the board. Coming back slightly. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Field goal. I mean, the, the team has a chance. The team absolutely has a chance, and we're going back far. It is 14 yards away, technically goal line, to try and get a score here. Mixon, I mean, this is kind of like a Nico Collins route, no? Oh, what is Nico Collins doing, genuinely? I know he's doing that little zig out, but I don't even think he ran it right. Like, he, uh, he almost came to a dead stop here. Yeah, like, what is he doing? He's going, eh, eh, eh. There's no way that's what the route was supposed to be. Does It doesn't even show either. I mean, we still have a chance, but it's going to take a pretty good miracle. There's no way they throw the ball here. Surely. La I genuinely don't understand why I'm the worst run defender in the history of run defense. Nick Bolton, of course, of all the players to be chasing him down. We crash down so hard, and they just they, they block off like four players with three. Well, we knew we weren't going to win when we went against the Chiefs anyways, but still, to lose that way is really annoying. Take a look at the numbers. CJ Stroud with zero at touchdowns. Um, their run game was miles better. Sack totals were probably better. Yep, yeah. we had one. Just, we got outplayed. All right, we have the Lions in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. And the Lions actually win. Okay. There is a new team winning Super Bowl. Let's see if our, uh, any of our offensive players got dev ups. No. And Mixon's actually still not too bad. 30 years old without being a superstar or an X Factor. And he's an 87 overall. So, yeah. I mean, imagine if he would have got to superstar or X Factor. He might have been able to stick around even longer. But he'll definitely be here for at least another year. Bark still does go to superstar, like we said. Uh, Smith doesn't go up in dev. Might still give him another season, though. He's still, you know, young enough, and we'll kind of see what the draft uh, entails. But Barksdale going from normal to superstar based on rookie of the year and the season he had. Oh, my. I just yawned. Barksdale just bores me the hell. And yes, I could go super try hard and be like, oh, super professional. Well, let me edit this yawn out real quick. Uh -huh, fun. But no, I like, I like to just chill. You know, basically do every rebuild like we're just chilling out. You know, we're all just sitting around a couch, like, making decisions together. But uh, let's see the re-signings. Uh, there might have been some retirements. I don't know if Shaq Mesa was on that list. Might even let him go if he's still around. I don't know if they if we needed to pay him. He just didn't get paid. I don't know. But uh, $70 million. Okay, so we're in a little bit better of a spot than I thought we would be. I think it actually is smart to fifth-year option uh, Anderson. And Stroud, I think, is smarter to, to wait and just give him the contract this following season, which I know is realism-wise doesn't make a whole lot of sense because most teams are, like, fiending for that fifth-year option for the quarterbacks. But at the same time, fifth-year options usually are a lot cheaper than that for QB, right? But 86 overall, the biggest need we would have is basically safety. Uh, don't get me wrong, you know, guys like Bland or Donald would be great for right now. Tooney. Stanley, but uh, long-term wise, realistically, I don't think we need any of that. And honestly, even safety, it's it's not really a position we should be overpaying. I think at best we just draft another one and see if we get a hidden. But even then, we might be able to just roll with who we have and hope they develop. All right, trade uh, Shaq Mason over to the Giants for a fourth-round pick. We're seeing O-Lyman get paid quite a bit. So getting a, uh, a 10 million, technically a 7 mil on the year guard 
worth that extra draft pick, to be honest. All right, the draft, we have pick 25, and I think this is a future-proofing draft where we worry about the fact that Daniil Hunter actually might have needed a contract by now. I might have... No, I did change it to a 2 or 49. I might have actually made it an eight, a 3 or 81 on accident or whatever the Vikings had uh, off the check uh, after this. But uh, safety is also a need. Florence looks amazing. Uh, he looks really good. But I think edge rusher, which we have one, two, three, four of, is the next one. The problem is they're all round one. So that could literally just not go our way. All right, we had to trade a first this, a third this, a fourth next, Scruggs and Toto to the Bears to move up eight spots from 25 to 17. I really wanted Tevin Brown more than the guy we're about to go for, but it's not commonly that you're going to find any sort of pass rusher, you know, in the late first. So I'm going to take a guy that could actually have a finesse and a power move, but I do worry about that tackling and block shedding. There's a good chance this guy's normal dev with the stamina as well, but I've got to take that chance. I, I don't. I really don't have to take that chance. The next time I know something like that's going to happen, I've got to just say, okay, I need an edge rusher for the future, but he's not him. He is not him. I guarantee Tevin Brown's going to be good too. Watch. I just know it. Uh, at this point, we don't really need DT. But there's a lot of good ones. Raglan might still be a guy that I'm willing to go for. O-line Darby looks so freaking good. Oh, Joe Angelo. Or Angulo. I'm going for Joe Angulo. Hidden dev. Thought he'd been a little bit faster than that, to be honest. But we got ourselves a new wide receiver. Might be able to play number two and then move uh, Tank Dell to three. Or vice versa. Just let Angulo or whatever the hell his damn name is play uh, the number three. Raglan goes right there. Of course he does. Why wouldn't he? Steel still there, though. Gilkey? Maybe Gilkey's better than the guy we just took, actually. Uh, I don't know. Steel looks pretty good, too. We'd have depth. Do I go Gilkey? I'm going to go Gilkey. Hidden Dev is not ever going to happen for us, is it? All right, we're at our next pick. I don't really like any of the players that are here, to be honest. Uh, but maybe we'll go for some speed. I can't remember if Patton. I think Patton was pretty fast. No, he was not. Never mind. One of these guys was fast. 3-3-4, three, three, that is pretty fast. And then Wise, who is 5'11", is also kind of fast. I don't like any of those guys, to be honest. I guess I go DeMarco Pope, 6'1", 22 years old, 93 speed, a little bit of zone, could play backup safety, I guess. Not our best draft. Not our best draft at all. But the wide receiver was hidden, so fair enough. Hidden dev wide receiver, not the easiest to find, especially outside of the first round. And looking at our draft, 73 overall, 75, 70, 69, 69, 72. So, gut reactions. Brown was better. That's... Is that an 80 overall tight end? It is. Sam Garfield. 6'4". Uh, you know, it's decently athletic. Very good run blocking, actually. Kind of curious that dev, but... I'm not that curious about anyone else. <laughs> X-Factor. Alright, I don't know if that's generational, but it's freaking amazing. Brown. Where the hell was he? Brown. 75 overall. Okay, it was normal in fairness, so... 79 finesse. 76 block shed with 86 speed. 79, 76, 86 speed. 78, 66, 80 speed. I mean, our guy still has potential, but he is nowhere near as good. And they're both normal, so that says something about that. And then I do want to see my gut decision of going for Gilkey instead of Steel. Steel, in my mind, was definitely the better player. Where was he? 70 overall, and yep, Hidden Dev. Nice, love it. Really low overall, but really good, though. 78 finesse with 73 block shed is pretty solid. Dev, star. Here's the squad for year three. Uh, we have a new... Actually, we didn't even check the dev for the wide receiver. Joe Angelo or Angulo. Angelo. I don't freaking know. It looks like Angelo to me. Uh, decent player. Very fast. Dev of star. I was kind of hoping for better, but... The rest of the team, uh, and really the only O-line issues we have is Tunsil. He's 32, so, I mean, other than being able to pay him, I think we're fine. Uh, we're going to be losing Mixon soon, I'd say, maybe even after this season. Same with Schwartz. So, while it looks like we're against the wall money-wise, we might actually be fine in the end. I do also worry about having to pay Hunter and Christian Harris. 
All right, 133 mil, and like I said, would Daniil Hunter have to pay him, have to pay Tank, have to pay Tonsil, some names here, but it really comes down to how much can we get away with CJ Stroud. 50 million per year, technically 52 million per year, 52 on 5, that's, that's money, but that's just the way the league is nowadays, so a 2 year 53, which is more than Daniil initially paid, uh, got paid with us. 61 mil left over, though, and we're looking fine, I think. 47 mil, we have to pay Tunsil. Schultz is not bad, but I think we have a better backup ready to go. And then Tunsil, oh my god, it's 33. Okay, a one-year 33. Really? At these numbers? What numbers? Then we don't even have enough numbers to freaking pay you. That's how many numbers there are. We haven't even invented the numbers yet. Getting up there in the trillions. And then I, I gave him 200k more, and he's like, yay, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, I guess. If we win, we should be in the playoffs, and we do. We steal the division right at the end. I ended up changing to... Did I change the playbook? I can't remember, but we had a really bad start, and I think I did. Oh, yeah, I changed to the Raiders playbook on offense, which uh, we'll see what happens. I don't really see the Raiders win too often, but it just might be a lack of talent thing, so... Wow, those passing touchdowns were useless. And we didn't even have that many rushing. Another really bad year for the offense, but we make our way into the playoffs, I guess. Sacks, down year, I don't know what's happening with the team. As we get better, we get worse. Even the kicking was worse. The only one actually improving is the punter. That's saying something. The punter is the only guy improving. That is really sad. We have an identity crisis, but we also have a playoff berth, so we'll see if we can do anything with this team. Going to the end of the game. 3-0. Uh, to zero. Still 3-0. to zero. Still 3-0. to zero. Still 3-0. to 10-0. to zero. Just, just no scoring. Yeah, screw it. We'll go through the whole game without scoring. Who made this game? Honest to God. Well, here it is. 26-8. Similar ratings, yet... Apparently our offense sucks, I guess. Sweet. Love it. Packers versus Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Apparently we still have like 50 plus mil and I paid Tunsil 40 mil while paying Tunsil. Kind of impressive. Wow, what a Super Bowl that was. Wonder if anyone retired on us. I highly doubt it. At least anyone that like, you know, we projected as a starter. But anyways, 40 mil. See if we do want to pay anyone because, uh, okay, fifth year option. We're going to wait on Wiggins. Dalton Schultz dropped four overalls. It makes sense to release him. Nixon's gone. So we do have 40 mil, but we are losing our starting running back, which is a problem. Fairbairn was terrible, so we're letting him go. I mean, we need a new couple of names, but cap-wise, we're actually doing pretty well. Kind of just hoping there's a really good running back here that's not the oldest man of all time, which probably isn't going to be the case. Really good center. Carl Loftus is interesting. Pollard, nah. I just said isn't the oldest man of all time. While he is the oldest man of all time. Zach Charbonnet. I like someone a little bit faster than that. 88 speed. I'm going to as well just use Pierce. Who we did pay for a reason. I kind of felt like this day was coming at some point. And it is here. Uh, I mean safety might be a positional need. Don't know if the strong safety we have. Actually got that dev up finally or not. But I don't think free agency is going to help us out. Which is okay. Might have to draft a running back in the first round. But DevOps on the offensive side of the ball, none to be seen. Defensively, safety? Nope, still no DevOps for him. Uh, Dinika Hunter regresses a little bit, but he's fine for at least one more season. Really need this fourth year, which is kind of a really monumentous year for us. Most rebuilds for Super Bowl wins to be a good one because we're probably going to have to replace Hunter, and I do not think Howard's going to be the guy to do it. Uh, and then Smith, he might be normal dev, but he's actually really good zone coverage. Uh, 84 zone, 79 uh, overall. I think he's fine. So, sure, if somebody falls into our lap, that'll be a position we look at. But running back might be our first position taken, which is crazy. First round running back. But if someone's that good is up there, I'm going to do it. And then we're going to be looking at edge again. All right, we have pick 20. I do not know if I actually have a running back here at 20. We have a guy that's a 1-2. to two. He looks decent. But is he pick 20 worthy? Let's find out. Uh, I scouted him further and I just still didn't even get that catching grade in. Uh, 4 3 8 is great. A stiff arm, B truck, A carrying, B break tackle, B ball carrier vision. Uh, awareness is up there. Uh, blocking apparently, apparently is up there. But juke move is terrible, apparently. 
I don't know if that's like our guy. He's like a, a poor man's uh, Pierce, really. I mean, would you not just say Hitchens later? He's a little bit slower, but I mean, he's like almost the exact same thing as him, right? And I don't have to take him in the first round, so I might actually be taking safety overall. Uh, scouted Gross and Birch more, and they both look pretty damn good. We have some corners that look really good too, but kind of just want a true safety uh, edge. It was like all round ones, and they were all gone by uh, 20. So I'm probably just going to go with whoever's faster between Birch and Gross because... As far as we know about them, they're both pretty similar. 4-4-5 four, four, with a great speed. And then Gross, who is a 440, and he's 20. I guess there's no point in me even looking. He's a little bit worse in tackling, but Mike Gross. And he's hidden. I was about to say, if he's normal dev, that's an L, but he's hidden. Which means that whenever Petrie's gone, we could probably get rid of him. Um, as I don't even know if Gross is going to start. I, don't, I mean, if he's a decent overall, he's like... Uh, I had man on my list as well. If he's like uh, 75, 76, might start him just because of that dev, but I don't know. And then we have a running back, Fender, Joshua Fender. Uh, pretty fast. A truck, B stiff arm, B break tackle, B uh, ball carrier vision. Looks like another guy that isn't going to have any juke move, though. So once again, why not just take uh, Hitchens? Safety, don't really need that anymore. Linebacker, I guess, to future proof. Uh, center could future proof as well. Um,. I don't know if Carpenter is great, but he's got a B block shed. How fast is he? 22 years old, though. Now that 22 is old, it's just uh, obviously he's not going to start this year. So I'd like to have someone that lasts a little bit longer. Speed's okay for Baldwin. Maybe O-line. Maybe O-line. You know what? I'm actually going to trade down. All right, going to move to the third round. High third to get a third next year, which I think is pretty fair. Obviously, it is going to be the Jaguars, so their pick is probably going to be, you know... Middle at best, but probably not very good in general. Uh, with this pick, though, I think we're going to be grabbing the linebacker, Mr. Carpenter. Let's actually take a look at Solomon. I think he was on the slower side, though. 21 years old. Yeah, he's younger, but he's slower. I mean, you obviously see the block shit in the zone coverage, but we're going for the speed. Brad Carpenter, normal dev. I don't know if he'll ever be anything for us, but depth, I suppose. And then we're going to take Hitchens here at 20. Might just be like a, a quote-unquote leap year at running back and just... Unless uh, Hitchens, obviously, you know, hidden dev, but Warren Hitchens, normal dev. Yeah, I was about to say, unless he's hidden, might just be a year where it's kind of like a wasted season. But let's move on to the fifth round, see if we have any edge rushers. And we don't, but we have a running back UDFA, Jalen Barnett. Not the fastest either, but another trucking type guy. Let's bring him in. And he's hidden. Okay, I mean, I suspect a low overall star dev, but it is a guy with actual hidden dev. So uh, we'll see. Running back has been a really tough position to get dev ups for because you got to be really high up there to get those devs. Maybe normal to star or whatever isn't too bad, but yeah, it's not an easy position to dev up these days uh, unless you're actually using the player, obviously. Dishman, the only kicker with good or better, and he's hidden dev, 92 overall, probably star, but... Hey, we'll take any hidden devs we can get, even if it's a damn fullback. Especially if it's a fullback, honestly, because it's probably the least commonly hidden dev player I see. Even less common than punters. All right, draft recap. Let's see that safety. Oh, 77. Linebacker, 73. 74 for the running back. 72 for that running back. Do we actually give this running back the starting job? Really damn good strength as well. Uh, trucking. Yeah, I mean, he's like a very straightforward running back. Injuries low as hell, though. Hitchens. I should have looked at his dev as well. But uh, Hitchens, definitely the more balanced back with slightly better injury. Not great injury, but slightly better. Didn't really get one of those complete backs and just a back that looks like they have a high ceiling. But we're probably going to start this guy just based on uh, him being hidden in general. Maybe Pierce starts just because we're trying to win it all right now. But we'll see. Mike Gross... Really good. You know, he's very similar to the safety we drafted, uh, you know, two seasons ago. Just actually hit and dev. Uh, would have been nice if it was higher than just star, but star is still better than normal, I suppose. I don't know if I'm going to start him, though. I like who we got. I like that guy, but I think, obviously, the thing that needs to be looked at is Weathersby. How good was Weathersby? Did we make the sell happen? So we obviously got a pretty good safety, but we don't really need safety as much as running back. Weathersby, 73 overall. He is hidden, okay. Um, low injury. I mean, he's literally like seventh round running back. You know, he's literally that whatever the fifth round running back we took Barnett. Unless his devs higher. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, what's the point? What's even the point? 
Season four, the running back position takes a massive hit, losing Mr. Joe Mixon. Uh, I was going to put Pierce in there, but obviously, A, his ceiling is kind of reached, and B, yeah, his trucking's kind of high, but that's really all he... Nah, he does have quite a bit on our running back. How old is Barnett? Because, I mean, if he were to win Rookie of the Year at 21 years old, you know, we'd be we'd be looking at a potential superstar. I think I'm going to start the youngster. Pierce is the number two, and Barnett's the number one. Let's see if we can get a catch lightning in a bottle Rookie Year again, like Pierce... Uh, wide receivers look pretty good. Tight ends, a new one as well. I mean, if we didn't win it last year, I don't see how this is the year that we actually win it when we have technically a worse team. Gross is also starting just because the ceiling. I mean, look, one overall lower despite having higher dev. Uh, and then, you know, maybe in the future, Smith takes over Petrie because Petrie's only an 85 overall still. And, uh, you know, he's not really progressing. 80 million. Will Anderson, Nate Wiggins, uh, Trevin Wallace. To be honest, Ororo, he, he kind of hit a wall. There's a good chance that he is gone. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be signing the guys that matter the absolute most. So, a six year 205 for Will. Uh, what is this going to be? A six year 60, which is super low for Wiggins. And then Trevin Wallace apparently isn't even that bad. A five-year, 42.5. So we have 30 mil left, which means Tonsil is officially going to be gone. And then I think Aurora is going to be gone too. Three-year, pretty much 60. 30 million per year is not worth it. So we need a new DT and we need a new tackle. That's not the worst thing to, to need to replace, though. And then obviously Barksdale with a contract we're seeing here from, uh, from Rook. I think it's going to be a tag from him or a fifth-year option from him. So yeah, DT tackle. If we win, we're probably in the playoffs. If not, we're out, and here we are with another 10-win season. I ended up going with the Vikings playbook this time. I thought, you know, they had Jefferson, Addison, uh, and Hawkinson, and then Dalvin was there at one point in time, so figured, uh, you know, maybe there's still some remnants in the playbook for uh, for a good 1,000-yard rusher. But here is C.J. Stroud, 26 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, 4,200 yards. Very Kirk Cousin-like, I will admit. Rushing, I can't tell because obviously, you know, he's a really low overall running back. You have to pretty much be a super high overall running back to kill it. Pierce is going to be the starter in the playoffs, I think, though. Nico Collins may be good enough for X-Factor. Tank Dell actually did pretty well. Angulo was pretty good. Angelo. Uh, and then Pace, no touchdowns, really, but yards were maybe good enough to get to Superstar. Defensively, Daniel Hunter, speaking of the Vikings, 14 sacks, 8.5 for Will Anderson, 7 for Barksdale, Interceptions, a couple across the board. The rookie Dishman did really well as a kicker, only missing one out of 15 kicks. I mean, last season it was, what, seven for Fairburn missed? Uh, Townsend about 52 yards per punt. I mean, there was at least some ups and some downs rather than just basically downs last season. Uh, and that was not a joke. <laughs> no. Uh, Barnett won Rookie of the Year. Wasn't really a great year yards per carry-wise, but 12 touchdowns is 12 touchdowns. And we also got Kicker of the Year, so... Two rookies going from star to superstar after this season, it seems. And we're going to get our loss right out of the way, pretty much. Nice. Oh, and we get to play in the snow. Sweet. Does look pretty cool, though, I admit. If we somehow beat the Chiefs without a run game, I don't know what to tell you. Because we had Joe Mixon before, couldn't do anything on offense. 7 to 10? That means it's something. The snow is maybe our realm. Remove the stadium and move it. 21 18. 24 to 18. We gave up the ball short field. No. All right. 30 to 25. Defense forcing the punt. One more score does it, especially if it's a touchdown. And it is. I mean, it sucks. It's only the wild card round, but to beat the Chiefs is massive. This could be the year. I mean, it's another four, year four. Uh, Stroud, four touchdowns, the one interception. Mahomes was locked down. Barnett was okay. Did fumble, though. Uh, Tank Dell and Nico Collins clutching up for over 200 yards and three touchdowns and 21 catches. Uh, what about the sack? Oh, yeah, sure. All of a sudden, showing his value because he wants to get that contract. Barksdale with one. Hunter with one. Willie Gay with a pick. Stingley with a pick. Kicking was perfect, despite the fact that it was basically a blizzard. And that's why you go Power Rusher. Two to Power Move and Block Shed, which still only puts him at 84-82. Uh, and then obviously we have a bunch of stuff going on here. Power move as well for Mr. Damian Barksdale. What a name, by the way. Uh, gets a bunch of different things. No to block shed, though. Division around, who could it be? Ooh, the Colts. 
I mean, the Jags have been winning a lot in this uh, realm as well, but Colts have been in a lot of Super Bowls lately in Sim. End of the game. 0-0 zero zero across the board. 7-0. Seven 7-7. Zero. Seven seven. 14-7. Oh, we had a drive, but we didn't have enough time. Second half, it's all tied up. They're back up by 7. We just seem like we're down by 7 the whole game, and then this is a legacy drive right here. Oh my god, they took like 10 minutes off the clock to score a freaking touchdown. And our clock, I mean, we're we're wasting more time than they did to get down the field. And they could just clock us. We need a touchdown, and we have 43 seconds to do so, and we need two of them. This is a miracle, at best. In behind, I don't know how the hell he made that play. Who even is that? Birch? Was that the safety from this last class? Well, there's that. I mean, I was forced into a situation. Maybe I should have taken the slot receiver deeper, but... We lose 28-14. to 14. I'm going to go all out with either the Chiefs or the Falcons playbook after this season. Terrible, terrible game. Barnett, though, with over four yards per carry. We really need a running back. I might have to trade for one. I think we need to trade for one. A lot of teams adding new running backs in the offseason. Telling you that, you know, running backs are are back on the top of the list of like, hey, wait, maybe they actually are valuable. Hey, running backs are a dime a dozen, but why does my run game suck, you know? So we need a we need a proven name, and we might have the trade to get that. Packers again in the Super Bowl gets the Ravens again, I believe. That was the year one or year two uh, Super Bowl matchup, if I'm not mistaken. And the Ravens do win. I don't think the Packers won any of their Super Bowl uh, trips yet. DevOps, uh, Barnett does go up in Dev, so it's like, yeah... For the final season, I would like a proven running back, but at the same time, we might have our guy. Uh, and then looking at DevOps on defense, I don't think we had any. But we'll see what we can do. We have how much money to re-sign. Like, Tunsil's got to go. He's like 30 mil plus. We can't afford that. 41 million. Uh, Barksdale, fifth-year option. Absolutely. This contract is actually like he wants to do it now, but still, I just don't think we can afford it. Tunsil maybe on a one-year deal. I mean, let's keep Tunsil for one more year. One year, 27. Screw it. 15 mil left to pay a running back, kind of. But likely going to be trading for one, so might be able to save a little bit of money there, too. Unless there's one in free agency. But I highly doubt it. 19 mil, so we have a little bit of uh, wiggle room. Uh, I don't really care about any of these players. I just want running back and kind of there. But, I mean, with this level of talent, I might as well just stick it out with who we got. There's a lot to pay for Ed Oliver, but he's like the only decent DT that isn't like super young or super old. He's 30 years old. He's an X-Factor. He has two years left on the contract. He's an 88 overall. A first, a third, a fifth, and then two years from now, seventh. To make that deal, I was going to go running back, and the running back room, I mean, maybe I can go for someone a little bit older that's better right now just for like a one-year rental, but realistically, we're better off just starting the, the rookie running back that we have that one rookie of the year. Oh, yeah, we don't have a first-round draft pick. We're in the draft, but I uh, forgot about lack of first-round draft pick. Moving on to the second round. There were some DTs in the third round anyways. That's kind of, you know, once again, more future-proofing. Don't actually need a starter for this year, but uh, I would like to know about the starters going forward. Benedict looks probably like our best bet at DT. Linebackers, there's some linebackers, but I don't think we're too worried about that, but Waller would be kind of cool to have. Uh, and then... Some linemen, some running backs, some linemen, but don't know if I'm going to go with that route. Uh, I think it's a little early, but three to four, I'm just going to just gonna get out of the way. Benedict, 481 with 33 reps. He's hitting dev, you know. There was a good chance he was going to be hitting dev and the other guy, but uh, you know, we got one. That's all that matters. I was going to take both if I had to. There's no way Bo Hannon went right before our pick. I was going to trade up, and I just realized we really don't have that much to trade up with. Uh, Raglan, I don't really like any of those guys. Pinkins, maybe, because he's like an actual pass rush type. 6'3", 249, decent in speed. A to C finesse, you gotta assume, is gonna be uh, at least a C or a B. Uh, obviously, the C is kind of guaranteed. Uh, O-line, I think I'm gonna... I don't know, actually. We don't really need edge anyways. I'm gonna go McFerrin. And he's hidden. He might be our future tackle, actually. 6'5", 327. And then if that outside linebacker is there at 25, I might have to go with him. But yeah, we uh, used up a lot of our draft picks getting at Oliver, which he's on a two-year deal, so technically don't even need... Oh, Pinkins is there. Technically don't even need the, uh, the... Oh, hidden! 
Okay. The DT. But hey, we'll take it. We actually got a couple of future proofs positions, despite the fact that we didn't have many draft picks. Debatably better than last year's draft. If that was, I think it's the draft, I think it was. Kind of sold last, last draft, if not mistaken. There was a tight end in this class that I kind of wanted, but, uh, you know, we only have so many picks. Could use another running back. I'm going to go for someone that's fast, whoever it is. This guy's actually probably the fastest. Will Garner. No ball carry division. So I don't know what we got there, but a six rounder, so who cares? The final draft for the final season. Hopefully this video is not too long. I probably did a lot of yapping again. Uh, ooh, six, seven overall, but that's fine. These two picks were our actual like starting picks, but I am kind of curious to see what Pinkins looks like. He had probably a B finesse, uh, 72 block shed to go with it. So, I mean, better than Howard, who was a first round draft pick for us recently enough. Uh, it would be the right end position we need more than anything with Hunter, I guess. Star Dev might be the future there. We'll see. The final season. Can we win a Super Bowl? Not the best squad we've ever uh, put together, but it's still a very good one. We have a really good defensive line. Corners are pretty good. Wiggins, I wish he would have developed a little bit better than this. Linebackers are really solid. Uh, safeties, there's potential and there's a lot of depth. Best depth in the league, so... We'll see. 89 overall could be like a 92, 93 by the end of the season. I think that's good enough to win it all. We'll see if EA agrees. Barnett, 80 overall superstar. We really need him to just have a year. Oh, we are in a hole. Holy crap. Where is all the money? So all of our linemen need to be paid. Literally all five of them. Tunsil, one, two, three, four, five linemen. The tight end. Daniil Hunter, of course, he's gone no matter what. The safety... I mean, who do we even pay? Do you keep the tight end and one lineman, maybe? Like, who? Rock, paper, scissors for who gets to stay? I mean, the tight end's kind of expensive. All right, so tight end, 15 mil left. Who's the cheapest lineman, really? So, obviously not Colbert. Uh, Yates is okay. I guess Yates in the tight end? <laughs> I suppose. Four year 56. We need to replace three linemen coming up here, and we have zero money. Mike Gross, superstar dev. I guess you made the right call with him at safety. Here we go to the playoffs, and one last hurrah. This must be Tunsil, who, I mean, we can't afford anyway, so it's pretty fitting for him to retire if uh, we can't afford another season out of him, but here it is. We're going to get a morale boost out of him, plus 10 to morale to all players. We never go with the Chiefs playbook. Because, well, as we all know, that uh, playbooks play a big factor as CJ Stroud's into the top three for yards, just like that. Uh, not the cleanest of years, but once again, in the AFC Conference, in a pretty competitive uh, division as well. What, two teams? Yeah, two teams. Obviously, we're a part of that team uh, on the top of the leaderboards. But uh, here's CJ Stroud, 32-2 to with 4450. Could be MVP. Barnett actually doing really well considering... Uh, you know, usually you got to be in like the 90s to be able to get seasons like that. But Barnett was a great draft pick. Dell was solid. Pace was amazing. Angelo was decent. Nick, Nico Collins, you know, I almost called him Nick Collins. <laughs> Rest in peace, my Packers goat. Um, he's not dead. He's just, he, you know, obviously doesn't play anymore. Uh, you know, pretty damn good stuff, but down year, but it is the Chiefs scheme. You know what's going to happen. It's going to be spread around. Will Anderson's 18 sacks, nine for Hunter. That's the direction we would want it because we can't afford Hunter anyways. Uh, linebacker, did Nick Bolton do enough to get to Superstar? Finally, we'll find out. Dishman, worse than his rookie year, sadly. Townsend with 51 yards per punt. MVP! V number five! Okay, I'm I'm sure. Surely. Uh, don't know if we'd have any award wins. Uh, Will Anderson, which is cool, I guess. But that was the only one. And no bye week any single time. Obviously, you know, kind of makes sense since we've been a little iffy. But um, here it is. The Ravens, 91 overall to their 88. Can we even sniff the Super Bowl? I don't know. Let's find out. To the end of the game. Come on, Houston, please. Just one Super Bowl trip. Even if we don't win the Super Bowl, I would consider a win if we at least make it. Or maybe even the championship round. I don't think we even got that, did we? We definitely got to the divisional. Maybe the championship? I don't know. But it's 17 all right now. The Ravens drive down for a touchdown. And it's going to come down to a two-minute drive with not a whole lot of success here to try and salvage this game. A lot of wide receivers on that side of the field. Inside. That's a dot. 
If he didn't have to turn around, Tank Dell is still a really good play. I don't want the clock to, to benefit them, so I'm not going to call a timeout here. I think that that would be a dumb decision, to be honest. Although, a lot more clock than I thought was coming off here. We do have a, uh, a couple of timeouts. Playing it safe, because once again, we have the time. I think that's that's about right. That's, that's about fair, and you already know if we get this. Probably going for two, <laughs> so I'm a little worried, but could it be? Back of the end zone, Tank Dell overthrown. I didn't even angle it. I just threw it straight at him. Third and one. I still don't trust even a throw here. I think they're actually kind of on this as well. Man, Nico. In trouble. Throw it away. Ten seconds left. Fourth and one. I might have wasted a little bit too much clock. First down. One timeout left. Seven seconds. Yeah, we... May have wasted too much clock. Whoops. We've got, like, realistically two shots here. Do we waste too much clock, or do we do it perfectly? And we get sacked instantly. And I did not mean to have this play. This is actually the play that sold us that other time. All right, Nico Collins over the middle. I can live with that. I need the running back in the backfield. I need him blocking for me. Okay, let's see what we got. Last play. Nico Collins, and it's slightly overthrown. They played that so perfectly on defense. I actually don't understand how. They played so perfectly on defense. And an ultra lackluster finish to this rebuild as Lamar Jackson throws for 100 yards less than Stroud but still wins the game. These are not numbers. I mean, they have rushing touchdowns, but these are not numbers you look at first glance and think, Yep, they deserve that win. This was a game where we blew opportunities, it would appear. They even got a kick blocked. We blew opportunities, and they did just enough to win in an ugly one. Although they did split... You know, they spread the ball around a lot on the ground, so it's not like they didn't deserve it, but it wasn't like a, wow, they, they killed us. It was like a, how the hell did the Texans not win that game kind of situation, which... I mean, let's see this potential retirement from Tunsil. I mean, there's no point. I mean, there's even if this wasn't year five, if it was year four, I'd be really lost because next season would feel like just a complete waste. Couldn't win it last year. You know, that's tough. Couldn't win it this year. It's like, okay, that's GG. Like, you're not winning it next season. You're about to lose the majority of your line. You're losing your edge rusher. You're losing your tackle. You know, it's just like, you know, the tackle counts as your line, but... It doesn't look good. That's all I can say. It doesn't look good. But I am curious to see what kind of re-signings we could make when it's all said and done. Packers and Chiefs, again, love that. Super fun to see a new one. Uh, only 16 mil, so not much, if anything. But uh, Stroud does finally get to X-Factor. Pace goes to Superstar. And then defensively, I don't think anyone went up in dev from where they were. So let's take a look at those re-signings, see how much money we'd have left, see who we would lose. But yeah, that's a GG. That's a good as any place to end it ironically enough uh we really didn't help the team i mean we built a really good team but success wise we didn't do much more than the texans already did in this kind of unexpected breakout year for them we're losing yeah all these linemen and daniel hunter on top of it backup safety's gone too it's, this is a gg for the roster let's just call it how it is going from what is it a 90 overall probably technically higher than that to what like a 86 I mean, clearly not a 90. I don't know what they're talking about. We literally lost, like, half the team. Let's see it. Okay, I, I guess you lose all your linemen, and it's... Let me, let, me, let me do a depth chart real quick. Let me do a depth chart change. Like, don't get me wrong. We wouldn't be completely screwed. We would have an okay edge rusher as the backup, and we could easily draft some linemen, but nowhere near as good as last season. Still says 90 overall, despite the fact that we have no left guard, center, or right guard. Nice. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Still 90? Like, please? I'm going to sim one week because I, I doubt I ever come back to this. And even if we do, we're not going to spend any money in free agency when we're broke. It would be pretty stupid to do something like that. Okay, let's let's go on. It still says 90, but either way, let's uh, take a look at the players we drafted. Well, some of them drafted and developed. And uh, head on our way, I suppose. CJ Stroud, 93 throw power, 96 deep, 97 med medium, 93 short. Never really had a truly elite season, though. Had a pretty good season this year. Never really truly elite, though. Nico Collins, 90 overall. I doubt his release is going to be good. He's 30 years old now. 
Yeah, the team is on its way down rather than on its way up at this point, which, I mean, we kept the window pretty open. Four or five seasons, technically five. Uh, release, really a problem for all of the uh, all of the wide receivers, to be fair. Uh, Barnett, we already looked at him. You know, didn't really change much. But he's obviously on his way up, I suppose. Don't care too much about the O-line, especially since we lost, like, all of them. We'd have our tackles, basically. Taj Pace, uh, pretty damn good. I think it was a smart decision to keep him. I was at first thinking dumb, but yeah, I'd rather keep a tight end than a, than a lineman, especially when you're losing a bunch of linemen anyways. Petrie, there's no point. You've literally seen him before, and he hasn't gone up any since then. Christian Harris, block shedding is so lackluster, but at least his coverage is decent, and he's obviously fast as hell. Nick Bolton, this is definitely far from the best Nick Bolton I've ever seen, but still very good. He's pretty fast, though. He might be faster than most Nick Bolton sims. Usually he's like 86, 87. 88 is very high. Uh, Trevin Wallace, 86 overall. Pretty impressed with how he developed. 90 block shed, 77 zone. Very athletic. Very good. That's where I was hoping Christian Harris would have been, but with even more athleticism. And then Gross is already like right on Petrie for uh, you know his overall and already higher than him for his dev. Cornerback number one, Mr. Stingley, 96 overall. Let's see how he's looking. Very balanced, 98 man coverage, 92 zone coverage. Pretty damn athletic. That catching, though, 84 with the plus 4 to 88. And then we look at Wiggins, who ended up as an 88 overall. Not superstar, though. Very good man, okay zone, and 99 speed. That is, some would say, pretty fast. Lost the right end, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll take a look at Barksdale who is very good at block shed, got two strength upgrades throughout his career, 92 tackle. Look at that excel, though, for a big dude. 77 power move, very good DT, obviously. Uh, had some okay seasons for us. And then Will Anderson, who, you know, he was up and down, but he had some elite seasons. Will Anderson with 99 finesse, 85 block shed, insane athleticism, great strength, great tackle, power moves even 80. Very solid player. What about those abilities? Okay, nothing elite, no, no edge threat or anything like that, but that is basically going to be it. So, you know, our first uh, kind of L rebuild, if you will, is we, I don't even know if we got to a championship round. We definitely did not get to a Super Bowl, which is automatically an L. Built some good teams, but unfortunately, EA just said eh, we weren't good enough. We just weren't good enough. I'm trying to think of what we could have done better. I mean, not much. We drafted that O-line pretty early. All the XP sliders are around 150, 160. Faster, getting maybe don't go for Petrie and get a different free safety to develop that position faster. But I don't think a safety is going to be the difference between winning and losing a Super Bowl. But, yeah, it just wasn't our uh, wasn't our rebuild. But still was pretty good. Might still have to do a 10-year rebuild of our Houston Texans franchise we actually did. So be on the lookout for that at some point. Um, but yeah, I haven't really, uh, been able to do any longer term rebuilds. I've been doing a bunch of different teams because of this week's free agency. If there's any other big names, which I don't even know how many are left on the market and one joins, maybe we'll do a rebuild of them, but don't know if we're going to have another rebuild till Sunday, maybe Saturday, but Sunday for sure. And like I said, I don't know when I'm going to start that. So maybe let me know in the comment section below, which team you'd like to see next. I have a couple of ideas, but we'll see. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate your continued support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jump Care. Second channel, Picare Plays, your non-mana content. Still gotta finish Spider-Man. Still don't know when I'm gonna record it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully come back for next video. But until next video, 